Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to cover log haul. We're going to cover winter weight conditions, map conditions, permit conditions, inner axle spacings. We're going to cover your width, your height, uh, inner axle spacings in the sense that how it affects you for the weights you can haul. We're going to cover all these things and more, so this should be very informative. Thanks again. We'll see you in a bit. Okay now, so we have a tree length load here. So with the tree length load, how we need secured is a minimum of three tie downs. Each tie down has to have a working load limit on it, okay? So with the working load limit, of the three tie downs, you have to add them together and you have to be able to secure at least one sixth of the load weight. Okay, so this is an off highway load. Okay, if this was permitted, if it was under a permit condition, each one of these tie downs would have to have a minimum working load limit of 1,368 kilograms, okay? You can't have any knots in the working section, okay? So the working section is anything that's securing the load, okay? Uh, worst case scenario, let's say you don't have a working load limit on one of these devices, the officer could decide to give you a written warning or a $575 fine. Okay. So we have a lot, load of logs here, um, so what I'm going to talk about is some requirements where logs have to contact stakes. So this is a tree length load, so whether it's a tree length or cut to length, uh, all outside logs have to contact in these two bunk stakes. Okay? So when I'm talking about outside logs, I'm talking about outside left, outside right and outside underneath. Okay, so if you, all your logs have to be loaded so they contact and go past the outside stakes and past the bottom bolsters. So let's say a log shifts in transit, you have a pulp load or a short wood load. If that log shifts and doesn't contact and it's an outside log and it doesn't contact bunk stake or a bolster, you're going to have to have two tie downs on that log. Okay, if you get stopped and transportation sees that, if there's a log that let's say cuts short right to here and it's sticking out of the load and it's on the outside, you can get a $575 fine which is a loose load ticket. So again you always have to carry extra wrappers, extra chains whether you belly wrap or you can ratchet them. Just remember that's considered a loose load. You might not be able to physically move that log but it's still considered a loose load under the cargo securement standard. Okay? So carry extra wrappers, extra boomers, whatever you need to secure that log. It needs to be loaded properly at the landing so everything has to contact at least two bunk stakes on the outsides and the bottom side. So by the cargo securement standard, on a tree length load you have to have a minimum of three tie downs. All three tie downs have to have a working load limit displayed. And with a load like this you have to secure one sixth of the load weight. Whether it's an off highway load or an on highway load. The only thing different you get on an off highway, like a private road, would be your widths, uh, your height, and your weights can be exceeded. So with that, uh, the owner of the road would be the one that would dictate your widths and your weights. So that would, on this road, this is the Pinnell Cut Across. This would be Warehouser, would tell you the width, the height, and the weights on the axle groups. So with your cargo securement device, what they have on this truck here is the new synthetic style. So you have to have a tag, so a lot of them will be uh, an orange or red tag with a working load limit. Or on this style, it's a steel tag, okay? So you're gonna have to have a minimum of three, and these three devices have to secure at least one sixth of the load weight. Okay, so now what we're gonna talk about is an empty log bunk permit. So what that permit allows you to do, let's say you have a trailer that's 12 feet wide, uh, 3.66 meters. Uh, if you have a trailer that's 12 feet 3.66, this permit allows you to take that trailer on highway with the following conditions met. So some of the conditions are, is you have to have reflective tape starting at the base of your bunk stake at least up to 1.5 meters on all three sides, the front side, outside and back side. The next thing you need is your Mickey Mouse lights need to be extended and on. 
And the next one is you have to have at least one flashing amber light on top of the cab. So if you have all those things and that permit, the permit is, is there to uh, get repairs done out of shop. Okay, so if you're not doing repairs within your own shop, you want to take that off-highway trailer to a shop within Alberta, that permit will cover you. If it's over 3.66 meters, it can't be transported. Uh, let's say if it's a pole trailer and you got it loaded on top of your truck, you can't be any higher than 5.1 meters high. Okay, so now we're going to talk about reflective tape on bunk stakes. So the regulation states that the rearmost bunk stakes have to have reflective tape on all three exposed sides, the rear, the outside, and the front. Okay, so this is a hay rack I'm on, so on the front stakes, you're going to have it on three exposed sides. If you have a Super B, on that Super B, you're going to have to have all three exposed sides on the front bunk stakes, the rear bunk stakes on the lead, and then also the pup trailer on the front bunk stakes and the rear bunk stakes. So again, three exposed sides, the front, the outside, and the back. If you don't have reflective tape, you're going to have to use Dayglow orange paint. Okay, so I'm just going to talk about heights. So remember what we said, you're allowed 4.8 meters. So I have this height stick. It's up to 4.8 meters. So at the beginning of the haul season, if you're going to haul one trailer all the time, you should measure it out as you can see with this one here. You're just a little bit above your bunk stake. So there's really no reason why you should be over height. Okay, so right now I'm standing in front of a tree length load. This is an off-highway load. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's off-highway or on-highway. All loads have to be crowned, whether you have multiple stacks of wood or a tree length load. They all have to be crowned. With the crown, the reason you want a crown is you want the tension of the tie-downs or tarp straps, whatever you're using, chain or cable, you want it to pull down in the center so all logs are packed tight. If you don't have a properly crowned load, you get stopped by transportation or RCMP or some other uh, body. You can get a $575 fine. You can get a failed CVSA inspection. Uh, a failed CVSA inspection and a fine, the fine can go to the driver or the company. And also the failed CVSA inspection uh, will go against the truck, the owner of the vehicle. And those points will go on the carrier's profile. So what we have here is a tree length load. So I just want to talk about uh, your heights here. So with any kind of load, tree length, cut to length, you can't have logs more than 50% above your bunk stakes, okay? The top of your load can crown up to 4.8 meters, but the outside, you can't have logs more than 50% above your bunk stakes, okay? Okay, we're here at the Pinto Cut Across. We're just gonna talk about some dimensional requirements with loads. So this is a tree length load. So with the tree length load, uh, Warehouser stipulates that you're going to want to have day and night lights and also streamers. Okay, so with streamers, you're going to want to have at least 10 in a bundle, at least a meter in length. Okay, and we're identifying the longest log here. It's on the left side. Okay, so you're going to have lights on the log and streamers. Also on the opposite side of the load, you're going to have streamers on there. So if this load was on highway, the regulation states, you're going to have to have lights on left and right side of the load to identify both sides of the load plus two bundles of streamers. So just remember that there's slight differences. Again, off highway loads, the only difference is basically is your dimensions and weight. So off highway, since this is a warehouse or road, they will dictate the width and the height and axle weights. So one of the key characteristics with a good load for especially tree length is you want everything running front to back. Some logs are going to cross a bit, but just make sure when the, the loads are getting put on the truck, you run front to back. That way you're going to eliminate some valleys, some ridges, uh, and irregular loads. With the tree length load with the overhang, you want to make sure the overhang is 18 inches or greater above the road surface at all times. Okay. Alright, so we have 7.2 meters. Ok, 
Okay, so what I was just measuring here is we have the inner axle spacing. That's a key factor on highway. This is an off highway load, so it doesn't matter. On highway, it matters. So we have a tridim axle group with a tandem axle group. And we have to have a minimum of 5.5 meters between the two groups. So what we've done is measure from the center of the last axle on the truck to the first axle on the trailer. So again, we are over seven meters, that there's not a problem. Uh, let's say if you get stopped on highway, and this measurement's under 5.5 meters, you would subtract 500 kilograms for every 10 centimeters, okay? So again, off highway, that doesn't matter, but on highway, uh, you can get significant fines for that. So where I've seen infractions in the past where, uh, let's say you've got some short wood. So the guy takes his reach, sucks it in. Uh, you have the two axle groups, a tridem tandem, five meters or less. You're going to get knocked down quite a bit in weight. So just remember always 5.5 meters from tridem to tandem. If it's a tandem axle group to another tandem, you're allowed five meters, okay? So just remember those when you're getting loaded, especially on short wood. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about on-highway loads. So I'm at an off-highway truck, I've got an off-highway tree length on, but we're going to talk about on-highway permit conditions. So on-highway permit conditions, so if you have a box load, so that would be your ends are reversed, you have to have four tie-downs. If you have a tree length load, you have to have three tie-downs. Let's say if you have a Super B with multiple stacks, each stack is going to have to have two tie-downs. Uh, each tie down is going to have to have a working load limit of 1,360 kilograms. So just remember to look at your permit conditions. Uh, you're going to have to have your map and your permit. Your map's going to go over uh, what road you can be on, uh, what bridges you can go over, uh, the color of your route. Your color is going to dictate the weights. Um, it's going to uh, the map's also going to tell you about the mill you can go to. With your permit, it's going to give you dimensions. It's going to give you heights, widths, and weights. Um, so just make sure you're always reading through those conditions and follow those uh, conditions placed on you by that permit. Okay, uh, winter weight permits are going to be license plate specific, also configuration specific. Okay, so with the winter weight permit, the license plate on the truck has to match the permit. If you're going to switch trucks with different license plates, you're going to have to get a different permit. Also, if the configuration changes. That winter weight permits void okay so just remember all those things so in the summer months you can run a winter weight permit it's still going to be license plate specific but not configuration specific okay so just remember all that take a good look at those permit conditions okay so now what we're going to do is wrap up cargo securement for log haul so with log haul there's permit conditions let's talk about tree length loads so with a tree length load on a pole trailer, the special permit condition states that if your bunks are 10 meters apart or under, your first tie down and your rear tie down has to be within a meter of your bunk stakes. Okay? Your center tie down is right in the center of the load. The next one states in the permit condition is if your bunk stakes are over 10 meters apart, you have to be within 2 meters of your front bunk stake and 2 meters within your rear bunk stake. So just read your permit conditions.